welcome to Life and Liberty Radio with David Householder. I'm Joshua Zay, and together you and I are taking another step toward freedom, both spiritual and political. So get comfortable, breathe in, and ignite your imagination. Envision a society that is spiritually deep and truly free. It's easy if you try. Welcome to Life and Liberty. I'm your host, Dave Householder, and I'm here with Rich Melheim and also with Dana Hansen. And Dana Hansen is the person who's put together a teaching DVD called How to Be a Christian Without Being a Jerk. And we watched that in our young adults group a little while back. We had a lot of fun with it. And it's, uh, it, 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 as I said with Rich Melheim yesterday, what brought you to the point where you wanted to make this DVD? Like I say, people that wake up in the morning say, I'm going to do a DVD today. They, they, there's something that pushes is it something that uh, drives you to it? What uh, what was that, Dana? Well, I, I've been working, uh, you know, my whole adult life in terms of reaching out, um, in ter- you know, with evangelism, you know, you know, sharing the faith uh, and training others. No, I mean my teenage years and college years and so forth. I was doing that on my own, and uh, have some great stories, you know, of being kind of a jerk. In terms of, of moving way too quickly with people and kind of and, and so smacking them over the head. Hitting them over the head with Bibles. Oh, exactly. So, so Christians do have a reputation for that, some of them. Yeah. Right? Where the, like, they're all excited about their faith and then right. everybody around them just runs for cover. Yeah, and it, and it, came, out of the, it, it came out of the Jesus People movement. I mean, we were, I mean huge amounts of uh, reconnection to God occurred in the United States in the 60s and the 70s in particular. And uh, it was an exciting time because people were coming out of the drug culture and coming out of uh, other unhealthy behaviors and all that because there was a lot of experimentation that that w- was being done. It seemed like this whole country was in an uproar, right, with the Vietnam War and everything. And it was a perfect time to come with a message of freedom from addiction, a message of hope, a message of you know being being liberated from. Uh, being held to expectations which weren't healthy and God was the answer or Jesus in particular in those days was the answer and so coming out of that the mm-hmm. Jesus freaks yeah Jesus freaks so it, that was a real that, that was just a very natural uh, response is you wanted everyone to know Jesus in that way and so you got, you know, it's very aggressive. It just depends on what your personality was as, as well. But then when I when I started teaching people by modeling it for them and and and, and training them, I, I I saw how it's not gonna, it, it's not something you, you have to you have to have a personality type to even be very assertive when you're sharing anything, but in particular sharing faith. So I'm not saying it's awful what happened in the you know what happened earlier in the Jesus People movement was awful. No, I thought it was great. I think I think that uh, it, it became a very good foundation for a lot of stuff in our country, but here's the problem: the problem is, unless someone is receiving your message through your behavior first and foremost, and then you have an opportunity to share the gospel in terms of the story, you're never going to get to the story unless you earn the right to get to that story. Well, in this day and age, in particular, everything is polar. And so it's either strong this way or strong that way. There isn't an opportunity for conversation. There isn't an opportunity to... It's loaded. The conversation Everything is loaded. always yeah. loaded. Yeah. And so most Christians end up just saying, well, I'm just not going to deal with it at all because uh, I, I, I don't want people to be mad at me. Oh, or, exactly. You know, I don't want people to, to be aggressive towards me or offended. And so we just leave it alone. Well, that's just exactly the opposite of, of what works in people's yeah, life because they need Jesus. Dickie Gumbel, who put the Alpha Course together, says it's like a bowling alley where there's one gutter and that's being insensitive and the other one is being too shy to say anything. And we usually go from one gutter to the next to the next. next. We don't even, we never keep the bowling ball in the wood. Exactly. So I, I started blogging on this. I, I was an early blogger back in... An like, early blogger? Yeah, I started in about 2004 doing blog posts, which most people, you know, I hadn't even heard of what a blog was, let alone. And I was I, what I was doing is on purpose... I was writing posts that the audience was somebody who is totally not Christian, doesn't know anything about Christian, and I even wrote it to the sense of somebody who is extremely liberal. Uh, that's just like kind of a phantom person in my head as I was writing. Okay, so how can I get as far as I can without them putting up a wall? 
And so that out of that came some really great uh, experience in terms of training other folks and working together, seeing a lot of success. In terms, when I mean success, is I mean great friendships and community being developed. And for many of the people, came to faith in Jesus, but it was not. I mean, it's always through the power of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit's got to have a, a tool. And you can't be a tool for the Holy Spirit to work through you. You've got to let the Holy Spirit work through you in a gracious and a compelling way. So one of my mantras early on is share the compassion of Jesus with everyone. Share the gospel with those who are receptive. Ooh, there's a nice little distinction there. So you don't you don't you don't go for the the closing of the sale with someone who is not receptive. If they're not receptive, you just love them and you and, and, and you and you share you share with them. You share life with them. Every just you look at every person as a friend. Mm-hmm. See, I, I never use the word, and I, and I don't teach this with other people that I'm training. I never use the word unchurched, unreached, um, lost, pagan. You wouldn't want to use a, a term for that like person that. that they wouldn't identify with. Well, here's the thing. Just put yourself in their position and then say those words to you. You're lost, Dave. Which one do you're I... Un, you're un-something, yeah, Which of those do I resonate with? I mean, it, basically it's saying ugly, <laughs> uh, you know, jerk. But, but what would you say about those people saying, well, you've got to convince people of their depravity before they can come No, to not at all, because I, the biblical model doesn't do that, so why would I have to do that? Yeah, Paul didn't... The, yeah. only, the, only, people that, the only people that Jesus would come at hard, hardcore in terms of calling them to repentance were people that were already people of faith. He didn't tell Greeks to repent. He told Jewish people to repent. And even in those cases, he didn't always use the word repent as repenting from sin. Repent, I mean, the actual word metanoia means to change your mind. Yeah, to have an upgrade in your head. Yeah, to think differently, to change your thinking. And so, yeah, you know, Jesus did start harping and, you know, at the Pharisees and so forth because they were doing stupid things. But Jesus, when it came to people who didn't, who, who didn't come out of the God's family and throughout Judaism, he, he, he used some pretty whimsical, compelling ways in order to do that. Yeah, it, it's just fascinating how that, uh, that comes together. I used to do a lot of snowboarding, and when I would get on the, on the chairlift, there was often people half my age on the chairlift, and uh, we'd, they'd be stuck with me for the whole ride. And first of all, I'd say, I'm a Bible teacher, what do you guys do? Just to, just to get their attention really quick, mm-hmm. and they immediately want to jump like off of the thing. Right. You know, just right. get, get me out of here because I'm stuck. Right. But, but then I would try, rather than to go for the close of the sale, I would try to get off the, 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 the other end of the, the chairlift with them thinking Christians might be okay and God might like me. Just, just, just to get some kind of, like you say, sharing the love of just some. It, one of my favorite questions was, do you ever pray? Uh, and it, I never had one person say no. Everyone prays. And I says, you know, can I pray for you right now? What, what's going on in your life? And I never had one person say I couldn't do it. No. And these are people no. who don't go to church. These yeah. are twenty-five-year-old people who smoke pot and. And you can work. even and you can even you can make it pretty much guaranteed people will let you pray for them if you just change your wording a tiny bit instead of even, instead of saying, I would like to pray for you. Can I pray for mm-hmm. you? Here I'm going to change that word. And I'm going to move from 50% to 100%. You ready? I'm going to pray for you. Okay? Look at the There's difference. There's a little difference there. See that? Uh, when I change from, can I pray for you or may I pray for you? When I change from that to, I'm going to pray for you. Okay? It went from 50% to 100 It's fascinating just how you word things. Just and, how you word Just them. helping people be receptive. And, and, and assuming that there's some spiritual life going on in them rather than assuming there's nothing. Right, and and so and so, after doing that, you know, I I, I wrote I wrote a book about this, uh, you know, how to how to share your faith in that way, and uh, didn't publish it, but instead I decided to go ahead and use the themes on a DVD movie, and so I did a, a teaching at a church in Hollywood, and an eight week course, and then they and then I hired a uh, actually a Hollywood film person, and I, I hired a director. And just went for it. And so what happened was it's a very well done, very high quality. And then the, and then the, then the um, editor just go ahead and, and, and split it up into 10 sessions. And so Rich Melheim actually was the guy that kind of convinced me to do that. So I, I really... He told me he had such that. good stuff. He, he was a bad steward if he didn't capture it. 
and he was getting ready to go to what, what church was it? Oasis or yeah, Oasis Christian Center. Yeah. And I thought, you Which know, is tragically hip, by the way. Uh, yeah. yeah. But you know, he's really hip too. But in a with good the way. bald head, he's, he's got that kind of rock star Oasis look, Christian especially Center. when he wears sunglasses. <laughs> but I thought, you know, do it. You got you're in a great venue. Do a three camera shoot and. And then I, I had started a project years ago called How to Be a Senior Pastor Without Being a Jerk, and I never did anything with it. So I said, Dana, why don't you use jerk? It's just a great title. So Dana's project is How to Be a Christian Without Being a Jerk. It's got a great fun cover with him hitting a kid over the head of the Bible. You know, it's good stuff. It's humorous, but it's really practical. And um, it, the way he broke it down into the 10 different sessions, uh, it's eminently doable. It could be a preaching series. It could be a teaching series. It could be a small group series. Um, it's, it's good stuff, and okay, it's usable. Exactly. We did our young adults group, and uh, some of the kids were not people of faith, and they liked it. Mm -hmm. Because it was just not that they weren't people of faith at all. You see, one thing I'm right. using a phrase, but they wouldn't right. call themselves that. Right. It's, it, it, it's practical. Uh -huh. It's fun. And it, it's, it's common sense. I always like to say you have to open the kid before you open the book, and it opens the kid. There's a Chinese saying, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Yes, yes. yes. So Dana, tell us about your church. I mean, you're, you're in an area that used to be uh, more Anglo, Midwestern, Protestant, white. The, there used to be the biggest Baptist Sunday school in the country was just down the road from you on Sherman mm -hmm. Way, uh, and that church had to move because all their members left. And so you're not in good demographic area for your typical Protestant Midwestern church, and yet, so you've had to make the shift to an evangelistic model. Even yeah. change your name. Yeah, and we did that early on. You know, I mean, I, I really saw, um, you know, God really spoke a lot of times to me, and I think it was God, and, and, and he's just saying, you know, you need to, <laughs> you need to uh, be the people for where I've planted you. And so we, we, we've been pioneers in a lot of areas. I mean, our congregation is, is mainly Anglo, and yet the most uh, outreach that we do, most of our activity level and all that is off our campus. And the primary demographic in terms of people who are receiving um, connections as friends is Latino, and, and the highest percentage is poor. Now, I mean, we're not, we live in an urban area. It's always been urban. It's just kind of like San Fernando Valley has always been considered a suburb of LA or something. Well, that's not a suburb. Three, a three square miles around our church is the seventh most congested area in the United States in terms yeah. of population per square. It's very dense with people. We have 225,000 people that live within three miles of our church. So you go ahead and you realize this is huge urban area continues to become more and more Latino. I mean, I, there's there's a ton of other folks. I mean, we have like a hundred and, what is it, 40 language groups or something that are, you know, that are found in that demographic. But the primary people that are there or moving in are, you know, are Latino folks. And so we've been focusing a lot. And, and the interesting thing is, is that the same kind of ideas and the same kind of practical applications that come out of how to be a Christian without being a jerk you know, which is relational evangelism. That would be a fancy way of saying it. Ah, it works cross-culturally. There's nothing that you would have to change. No, human interaction. Human interaction. One, one last question, Dana, before we move on. Uh, people say, well, you know, faith is a private thing, and you shouldn't just be talking to people about it. Uh, how would you answer that? Well, the way you answer it is, is you don't, unless they're open to it. And so the, 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 the key to relational evangelism, the key to evangelism, okay, the way the Holy Spirit works, Jesus already has it in place. He did it and he taught it. It's called person of peace. He said, when you go to the town, you find a person who welcomes you, who wants you there, who listens to you, who wants to learn from you, who likes you, somebody that you like and they like you, they're, they learn from you, they listen to you, and they welcome you in the sense of be very open. Well, that's the person you stay with. Now, he's talking about stay with living in their house. I'm talking about being in relationship with them. So if the people that you share the gospel message with are people who are persons of peace. Because, I mean, the word Jesus said, when you find a person of peace, stay with that person. If you simply share the gospel only with folks who actually want to listen, who want to learn, and who like you already, and who are welcoming and, and, and very gracious to you, it's a slam dunk. You're not going to have one argument ever. You're not going to have one sense that, oh, he's going to trick me with a question of the Bible I don't know the answer to. 
It would be like sharing anything with a buddy. If you're sharing information with a buddy, they're gonna it's, they're gonna love to just have yeah, a, a conversation. Just naturally, you connect with right away when you first meet them. So yeah. you're not so you're not meeting with con, in conflict, or you're not being confrontational, and you're not receiving confrontation because folks that would be confrontational and so forth, you don't share the gospel with them. They're not ready. Just be a loving, but you just be a, a great, yep. loving person around them. And when they're ready, fine. If First they're not ready, fifteen. Uh, always be ready to share yeah. the hope that you have yeah. within you. But but this, this is the yeah, biggest. Exactly. This is the biggest. The biggest difference. I mean, it, for me personally, it 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 was like. Finding penicillin for the first time, you know, because, you know, whatever the greatest scientific uh, health thing was, right? Because once you realize that you're not having to try to share the gospel with people who don't want to hear it or who are going to be, you know, sarcastic and skeptical, once then all of a sudden it, it just shifts your whole view of how you can share that life-giving message of, of, of faith, of, of liberty, of freedom. I mean, I know those are kind of words you like. <laughs> and, and, you know, fits and, and well on this program. Fits well. So that's the thing. That's the thing that uh, people have to realize who are already people of faith. It's the only reason that you have these stereotypes floating in the back of your mind is because you simply haven't connected with people who are in our community who don't know Jesus. You just haven't done it. I know you haven't. I know you get this idea that you're going door to door or whatever because you, you somebody told you one time that that's what people do or whatever. Well, the Christians haven't been doing it in that way, in a confrontational way, door to door. They haven't been doing that for decades. So it's all you have is these these memes from the media or memes from old stories and all that. It's it's basically being a friend. Wow, that's tough. <laughs> and then and then your friend is going to because the Holy Spirit. Is going to jump in if there's any crack there. He's going to jump in. But it's so true. We we were handing out flyers in our neighborhood for an event we were putting on about earthquake preparedness in our church, and also on the back was an invitation to Christmas services, and it was just very low key. We we're going door to door knocking, just inviting people, and we went to a friend of mine from the church. He and I went to a whole bunch of maybe a couple hundred places after church one Sunday, and three or four of those families just really receptive and wanted to talk. The rest we just you know what, we just, and those are the families that we connected with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, just, we just paid attention because they were these were people who were genuinely interested in what we had to say. And I think that's really cool. And so, Dana, how do people get a hold of this? Well, they can go on the website, Dana Hansen, that's with an O, D A N A H A N S O N dot org. And there, there's, there's connections to getting the DVD. And also, there are podcasts, radio show podcasts, as well as sermons, as well as blog posts. And they all kind of relate and revolve around the area of. Reaching out and and uh, in particular practical things for uh, teaching your children and grandchildren um, in terms of evangelism and in terms of you know just being a friend for Jesus. So will there be a jerk series? You know, right now, <laughs> right now, my my focus has been on parenting and grandparenting, and then connecting that to evangelism and the. Putting all that stuff together, it I works. We've got really another well. show going up, coming up on that at some point. It works really I would well. Love to see where you're headed on that. Dana Hansen, thanks so much for being here on Life and Liberty. Rich Melheim, also. I'm Dave Householder, and we've been featuring a DVD teaching series called "How to Be a Christian Without Being a Jerk." So put some sunshine and water on these fresh ideas and keep taking that next step toward freedom. Join us every weekday for the latest life and liberty ideas. The views expressed on this program are purely those of the presenter and not necessarily those of the advertisers or organizations or persons with which the presenter has a relationship. Please click on the Amazon banner at the top of the life and liberty page and consider doing all your online shopping through this portal. See you tomorrow.